we're gonna do a, um, a shark drawing. I can move the piece of paper that I've got here, quote unquote piece of paper around. Just I'm using my like two fingers to do this and I kind of angle it however I want. I can zoom in or out. Uh, I'm gonna angle it a little bit because my hand is at an angle, of course, just like you would a real piece of paper. And I'm gonna start with right at the center of the page. I'm gonna do uh, a nice big circle. And oops, it's a little thin, so I'm gonna make it a little fatter. Oh yeah, over here on the right, I can make my pencil really thick, really thin by dragging that slider up or down, okay? All right, so let's start. We're gonna draw a nice big circle right in the middle of the screen like this. And you'll notice it's not a perfect circle. That's okay. I think that adds your personal stamp, your personal style onto your drawing. However, sometimes you do want a perfect circle if you're drawing uh, in a style that requires a more uh, precise style. This app will help you do that. Let me show you what I mean. Right below, I'm going to draw like a little circle. It's going to be a little wobbly, but I'm going to pause when I get to the top of it. Did you see that? It kind of made it more circular, more, more of a perfect circle. You can do the same with a square. Watch this. See that? Straightens it out. That's more of a rectangle, but you get the idea or a diamond. Uh, triangles too. See this? It kind of makes more perfect shapes. If you, when you get to the close of your shape, stop, it will straighten it out for you. Again, you don't always need to have perfect shapes, but when you do want them, this app really is helpful in getting you there. Oh, one other thing too. See how I'm making them appear and disappear? That's my undo and redo tool. And the bottom right, those little arrows, the one that points to the left, that's undo. And if you've ever written an email, uh, you have sometimes used that same undo trick. It's like, it's like a time travel tool for your drawing where you kind of step back in time to where you didn't have that drawing uh, made. Okay, let's continue our drawing. I'm gonna start um, by doing two lines, one at the top of this circle like this and one at the bottom of the circle like that. Okay, it's a little curved. It doesn't have to be curved. It can be straight on the bottom there. Uh, and as you can see, it's like, what is this? I mean, it's very abstract. It's very simple, a circle and two lines so far. I like to start drawings whenever I can very simply like this and then add details as we go. Another simple shape we can add is a like a half moon crescent shape like this right on the back. And now I think you'll be able to see how we're making it uh, a fish. You connect that just like that. And you can see, look at, if I zoom in, look at this. We're gonna go Ant-Man on this. We're going like Minecraft into this. Those are pixels. That's what we're painting with uh, on a digital uh, screen are these squares. And then the computer puts them together in a certain combination based on where what lines you're making into a big drawing like that. Kind of neat, right? Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna add some triangles, you guys. Triangles, another simple shape. Triangles are gonna be our dorsal fin like that the one that pokes up through the water as the shark swims close to the surface. And then we're gonna add some pectoral fins. These are the ones uh, that help the shark steer through the water like that. Okay, just simple triangles, just like this, okay? I'm gonna draw uh, shark's snout next, but I'm gonna draw it purposefully smaller than I want because I wanna show you something kind of cool. So maybe hold off on your snout at the moment. You can follow me if you want, but I'm going to make it a little small because I want to show you something kind of cool. All right, so that sh shark snout is small. Now, I could erase it and make it bigger, redraw it and make it bigger, but digital drawing lets you do something kind of neat. You can edit your drawings really easily as you work on them, um, unlike any other media that I know of. So if I, if I select this little lasso, this little S thing up here in the upper left, and I draw a little circle around just what I want to change. And then my arrow tool in the upper left as well, it gives me this little bracket thing and I can kind of grab a corner and make that part of my drawing bigger or smaller. Now, I think it should be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna keep dragging it, keep dragging it, keep dragging it, keep dragging it until I think it's about the right size. Digital drawing lets you kind of pre, it's kind of a big word, pre-visualize or see ahead of time uh, how big or how small elements, pieces of your drawing should be. Pretty neat. You can make it really small too. Super tiny, or super big. I can make it really big. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger like this. And I'm going to angle it a little bit more like that. Okay. Just kind of 
and give it a little angle. Okay, so if you wanna go ahead and draw your snout, so you can draw it about that big right there. It can be curved, see that curve right there? Or it can be straight like a regular triangle either way. Okay, um, whatever you like. Okay, so we've got this snout. I think we should add eyes next. And eyes, as you may guess, are just nice big circles like this. One right here, one right here like that. Okay, and oh gosh, where should our shark be looking? I'm gonna kind of have him looking over this way because I wanna draw a little fish over in here in a second. You can draw them wherever you want though. You can have them looking over here. You can have them looking down if you want this. I'm gonna have my shark looking over this way though, looking to the right side. And you can make those eyeballs, those pupils as big or as small as you want. I think you'll enjoy experimenting with that. Let's give shark a mouth and all of his teeth. And to do that, we're kind of, kind of, kind of draw the same shape we did for uh, his fins and his snout, which is like a curved triangle like this, a smile like that. You can make it really big if you want. I made it kind of medium sized here, but you can make it bigger if you want. I hope your sharks are looking good. I'm sure they are. Uh, if you want to share them after by holding them up to the screen, I'd love to see them after, but if not, that's all right too. All right, let's do some teeth. Now, shark has four teeth across the top. You can add as many teeth as you want. I'm gonna just, for his teeth, really simple. I'm gonna make two W's side by side. There's one W. You know what, I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna make it an M. I'm gonna make another M right here like this. See that? Really simple. It just goes to show that every drawing, if you start making simple shapes, uh, you can add more details later. But if you start with simple shapes, it's a great way of making sure your character will look the same again and again and again. That's really important when you're drawing a graphic novel, when you're drawing a picture book, and you want your characters to look the same. If you have the same process every time, you know, simple shapes, you're almost guaranteed to, um, to get that, to get that consistent character. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, let's add some gills. Gills are really hard. Oh my gosh, there's just three lines. Look at this. Okay, <laughs> really easy right in there. They can be roughly in that area. They don't have to be perfectly in that area. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I wanna show you something kind of cool that I was getting at earlier. And that's, um, that involves drawing a little fish. You can join me in drawing this fish if you want. You don't have to, but I'm gonna draw a little fish over here. It's just a letter C like this. And then maybe like a letter U on its side. Let's do it this way. Maybe another letter U like that. Okay, and another U here for that fin like this. How about a nice big I like this? Let's go, oops, let's make it more of a curve like that. All right, and maybe a fin on top like this. And then maybe a fin like there like that. Or actually, I don't know if gills would be better. Yeah. I don't know, it's up to you guys. I think I might just do gills like this. And then we've got the fish, the lines for their tail fin. Okay, you can do another bulbous eye over there if you want, kind of bulging out, okay. All right, so there's our little fish. And we're gonna have these two kind of interact a little bit. I wanna let you in on a cool trick that you can use with your characters. Couldn't be easier to Instantly change your character's expression by adding eyebrows and where eyebrows go. I'm gonna put eyebrows on a different layer. Remember the layers, they were different pieces of paper. I'm gonna put these eyebrows on layer two and I'll show you why in a second. But let's add some eyebrows. Let's put them up here like this. Okay, just scribble lines like that, totally fine. Okay, now to me, it looks like shark could be saying two fish Hey, fish, how are you? You look great. Let's go for a swim, right? I don't know why he talks like that, but that's his voice. <laughs> what happens when we take those same eyebrows, I'm going to use my move tool, just like I did with the snout. And I can do this because they're on their own layer. See that? See how layer three is most of the shark drawing, and then layer two is just the eyebrows? What if I take those same eyebrows, you guys, and move them down like this, over shark's eyes like that? Oops. 
And what happens when I take this one and kind of angle it a little bit like that? Yeah, now it kind of looks to me, you may disagree, but it looks like to me that shark is saying, hey fish, you look delicious. Let's go for uh, lunch, right? He looks a little more mischievous, a little more uh, sly perhaps. And it's all about where you put the eyebrows. So I'm telling you, if you experiment where your eyebrows go in your drawings and your characters going forward, I think you'll be amazed at how much uh, your character's expression will change by where you put the eyebrows and what kind of angle they're at, how big they are, all that jazz. Um, I mean, you can make really bushy eyebrows like this. Uh, you can give them to your fishy friend over here using digital tools. It could be fish food kind of coming down from the surface. It could be a mustache for fish. <laughs> That's the thing about digital drawing is that, oh my gosh, you can just do anything. And it's just, it's fun, but uh, it can really, uh, you can really, <laughs> you can really waste a lot of time, um, but that's okay. That's all right, if you have the time. All right, we're moving on. Let's, um, let's do a couple of quick cleanup marks. Let's, um, I'm gonna put those on the same layer and I'm gonna erase this line here. We don't really need that. If you wanna keep it, you can, but I'm gonna erase mine just to kind of clean them up a little bit. And this one too, right by the snout. And I'm gonna draw one more line from the snout, kind of goes past the mouth, down between the pectoral fins. And then we're gonna pick it up again back here on um, the back part of shark's tail. That's gonna be, when we go to color this, that's gonna show what part is you know, blue or gray, whatever you decide to color your shark and what part will be white. Um, I hope that makes sense. All right, let's add some uh, bubbles. Look at this, instantly indicate that these characters are underwater just by adding circles, bubbles, what have you. Okay, let's see. I think we might be ready to add some color. What do you think? I think we could, I think we could. I'm gonna show you how to color in digital drawing apps. It's really neat. I'm gonna jump down to layer one, which is right below. I hope you can see that on your screen. You can see I've got all of my line work on layer three. I'm gonna to go to layer one just by tapping it. Now, everything I color is gonna be on its own piece of paper, if that makes sense, and on its own layer. And I'll show you why that's cool in a second. I'm gonna pick a color, look at this guys, I've got 16 million colors from which to choose. 16 million, that's crazy. I could never pick that many, use that many, I should say. Um, fortunately, this app lets you build your own palette, this little checkerboard thing down at the bottom. Uh, and I've sort of pre-selected colors for us today. In fact, these are all the colors I used to color the shark book that we just read. Those are it, that's it. Those are the only colors that I used. Okay, let's pick this nice blue color. I'm gonna change from a pencil to, oh gosh, let's pick something a little more um, uh, painterly. Let's see, I think there's one called um, painting. There's one, here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna pick this one called gouache. It looks like it says gochi, but it's actually gouache. It's like a it's like a watercolor almost. And I'm gonna change the size of my brush a little bit. I'll zoom in a little bit. And oops, that's really big. Let's do this. Let's color like that. And I'm not gonna worry about staying in the lines or going outside of the lines just yet, because two things. One, I think it's really kind of nice to go outside the lines sometimes because it gives your character movement, life, energy. And that's really what you want out of, out of a um, picture book character sometimes or a graphic novel character. You want that sort of zip zeal movement um, and uh, life in your, in your character. Not always, but a lot of times, at least for my books. Your books, when you do your books might be different. Um, Plus it's easy to, another reason to go outside the lines is it's easy to clean it up in digital drawing if you, uh, if you want to. See this, I'm just kind of using my eraser tool. I'll leave some of it outside the lines, but I'll clean it up a little bit, right? Just like this, here and there. Yeah, hope you can see that. I'm gonna go over it again with the same color, the same brush, and that's gonna give us a little bit of a shading effect, a little more of a three-dimensional effect. Hope you can see that. It's a little light, so I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pick a slightly darker blue. I'm gonna pick this blue right here. See that? Go back to my shark. There we go. Now we're getting a little darker, a little more shade. Yeah, that's good. Hope you can see what I'm talking about. Um, if you want to, you can, you can um, smudge your 
um, paint work by picking the smudge tool in the upper right. See that little finger tool? And if you don't like how severe or how obvious those lines are, you can do this, you can smudge it. So it's a little more gradual. See that? Kind of work it out a little bit, make it a little more smooth. I don't always do that. I like kind of that hard edge line myself, but if you want to, that's something that this app lets you do pretty easily is the smudge tool. Really fun too, when you work with uh, the charcoal tools to smudge charcoal and you don't get your hands smudged, which I kind of miss. I like getting my hands smudgy. All right, we're moving on. Let's pick a black color. I'm gonna go back to my um, pencil tool because I want to show you something neat. Let's, um, you know how I was drawing a line like this earlier, very simply. Watch what happens when I, when I um, move my pencil across and press a little bit harder. See that? It gets a little fatter, nice wider line. And that's kind of indicating like a little, uh, maybe a shadow that he's casting on the sea floor, perhaps. Watch what happens too when I hold, I wish you could see, but I'm holding my pencil at an angle. You know what happens when we hold a pencil at an angle on a piece of paper? We get this kind of shading effect. You can get the same effect using this Apple Pencil on your screen. It's kind of magical uh, that someone figured out that when you hold this piece of plastic at an angle on a piece of glass in this app, you get this sort of shaded pencil effect. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, let's add some shading to sharp. Uh, let's see what happens when we do that. That kind of works pretty well, I think. Gives it a little bit of, again, three-dimensional uh, look, but also, I don't know, it gives it the texture, I think, that um, we like to see in our characters in picture books. I like to see in our characters in picture books. You may disagree. That's totally fine. Totally cool. Um, all right. Let's add some shading up in here, too. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I think that's looking pretty neat. Um, now, unfortunately, I did that all on the color layer, but that's okay. That's okay. You know what? Let's do it really quick. This is driving me nuts. I don't know about you, but we got to color that fish. Oh my goodness. Right? Let's go back and color that fish. And uh, we're going to use that same um, gouache. We'll zoom in like this. I'm going to pick this nice orange color and just give this a nice, there we go. I don't know if you can see, but the, the brushes, the app is kind of giving us these nice sort of striations, these lines, this sort of shifts in color that a real brush would give us. It's pretty amazing. These tools, this app, all pretty new in the past couple of years have come along and uh, it's really making digital artwork more accessible, more intuitive, more fun, more varied in how it looks. And it's really exciting time to be um, experimenting with these tools and relatively inexpensive. I mean, yes, the iPad can be costly, but um, no more so than paints, canvases over years. Um, the apps are very inexpensive, which is nice. Okay. So we've got our fish and our shark colored. I'm gonna show you this cool thing with layers though. Remember that I've added two layers here. I've got one layer with my line work and one layer with color. I can turn off, that is to say, I can make invisible those layers uh, at any given time. So I could turn off my color by clicking that little check mark. See that? Now I'm right back to just the line work, pretty cool. But I can also do the opposite. I can turn off the line work and just get the color. Now, what is this? To me, it looks like, I mean, maybe to you, it looks like a couple blobs. Would You wouldn't be uh, far off, it is very blobby. But to me, I'm thinking, ooh, what else can I make out of this abstract shape? And for someone like me who does creative things every day, tries to come up with story ideas every day, character ideas every day. That's really valuable, right? Because you can kind of dream and build and make stuff really quickly out of other things you've already done. Let me show you what I mean. Let's, um, let's see if we can make another, I don't know, another character out of what this is. We'll put the eyes back there. Maybe he's got some teeth here. Maybe this is like his snout. Maybe these are big ears. Give him some line or horns maybe, I don't know. Give him some feet. 
um, like this. Again, don't know what this is gonna be, but we're already kind of dreaming out loud on our, on our page, if, as you were Adam's hair. Uh, maybe he's got a Dorito chip friend over here, down here, and he's got a hat and really long legs. Oh my goodness, and really long arms. Again, just having fun, just kind of making stuff up as we go. Maybe this could be um, a dragon or like a mini dragon or a mini lizard over here. Forgive my little rough um, work, but you get the idea. Um, see that? Maybe it's blowing a little fire like this. Okay, so what is this? I don't know, but let's see if we, maybe it's a, um, Maybe it's a werewolf who lives, it's the Winchester werewolf. And he loves reading books, but oh my gosh, there aren't a lot of books in the woods. Fortunately, his Dorito chip friend um, has a key to the library. Um, and they go in at night and read books when no one else is there. And he becomes super smart and he runs for office and he becomes mayor of a town. I don't know. The point is I've made this whole character and story idea from a shark and I might not use that story idea, but I might use the idea of someone running for mayor after reading a lot of books, or I might use a Dorito chip who is a key master, don't know. But the point is that digital drawing for me is a great way to explore, to experiment, to create very quickly, easily, um, without a lot of uh, downside. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I don't like any of these characters, I can undo or turn off that layer and go right back to where I was with my shark drawing. So all of those things together, um, you know, easy to fix drawings, easy to erase stuff if you don't like it, easy to change colors. Let me show you that. That's really neat to do. If I want to change the color, of it, see if this works. I don't know. Um, it's really easy to, to edit your work, bear with me. Like if I want to make, oops, if I want to make that character uh, green, it's really easy to, to change colors really quickly. All of those things together um, makes digital artwork really fun for me and really a great choice uh, for my working style and, uh, and for my books too. One more thing before we jump back to questions from you guys. And if you, again, if you have sharks to show, I'd love to see them, but if not, that's okay too. There's this feature called time-lapse replay, and that's under this little winch. You click time-lapse replay, that first option, and it plays a quick movie of everything that we drew together over the past several minutes. This is valuable to me because I can go back to a drawing and see my process, and I can see how long it took me to make a drawing or how little time it took me to make a drawing so that when I go back to make a new drawing, it reminds me, oh yeah, I did put a lot of work in on that last one. You're going to have to put that amount of work in on this one. So don't uh, don't think it's going to come easy. Don't think it's going to be an easy way around it. You're going to have to go through these steps just like you did this time. What I'm doing now is just kind of scrubbing through uh, time by dragging my finger across the top, that blue bar. And uh, we can see uh, forwards and, and uh, backwards in time. Really, really cool. You can email this to to friends, family, parents. You can post it online too if you want to share your process with other artists. Really, really stuff.